Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome you all. First of all, thank you so much for participating in this meeting. And I'd like to thank Steel Orbis for your support. And Vey Salve, I'd like to extend my gratitude to you. It's not easy. For 19 years, you have supported us with incredible data. And also, I'd like to thank our corporate communication group for this video. Thank you so much. It's a very nice video. Well, as you all know, each and every year, as of the moment that we became a sponsor, Urbe normally took the place to become a presenter, but last year he said that I always make a speech. So let be uh, let there be another person, youngsters. Then uh, I don't know, but they passed the ball to me. So now I thought about this. He said there should be someone younger, but I'm actually ten years older than him. And ten centimeters shorter, shorter than him, at least. And he doesn't have a gray hair. My hair gets transparent. So, uh, all in all, we are gathered together, and I'd like to share something very short with you and brief. I'm not going to give you the details of the figures of the sector because they said they has already given the numbers. So pr uh, next speakers will talk about our future vision. That's why I'll try to do my best to contribute this presentations. Before I start my speech. I'd like to say these words in the 100th anniversary of our Republic. I'd like to share our pride that we are almost at the same age with the Republic of our country. And we are on our path to do better days of Republic. And we're going to share the Republic with hope, passion, and all of our efforts, we are ready for the second. As you all know, if we have a look at the last 15 years, we've taken part in a lot of conferences, right? And main topics that were mentioned, if we took them into consideration, what we were talking about, the country steel production capacity utilization, along with their growth, and also countries steel consumption along with their important exports and world regional price ranges with various production costs by country and globalization with free trade which changed the fair trade under the implementation of anti-dumping and CVD. Anti-dumping was uh, pro provided and some uh, subventions, incentives were given by the state and WTO provided this fairness. World Trade Organization had an importance, had a meaning, and also 50% of the world steel production comes from China. This used to be the sentence that we uttered. However, something started to change five to six years ago, along with Trump. Because uh, Turkey is such a um, strong company that it felt that there was a threat over Turkish security and US announced Section 2032 and US felt that this was a threat against its country. Actually, this was not a new section. However, it was never utilized under the name of national security since he was a bit uh, alert in, in this respect and he had his authority. He implemented this section um, and sanctions against all countries in the world and 5% taxation was implemented. What happened afterwards? EU had to implement safeguards and at the very end quotas were implemented. All of a sudden, while we were talking about globalization, then we started to talk about regionalization and also there was indirect importation, additional measures were taken for indirect importation. Then Trump left, Biden came, COVID started, but as you know, 25% was levied, but some of countries still have the same tax 
Turkey has this taxation still. So what is the situation today? These are some of the topics that could impact the steel industry. Um, China still represents 50%, but well, actually they are right now 54% in the steel production. What do we have in addition to this? India is growing, Far Eastern countries and North African countries are making investments, and the USA, in terms of capacity, as flat, they seem to be stable. They made too much investment. They have renewed their facilities thanks to 25% taxation. In the last five years, they have made incredible investments, but the cost has been very uh, high because in the last 40 years, neither USA nor EU made investments, but in the last five years, they've made huge investments and they decrease the capacity in their old uh, factories and i'm sure you know this in the prices there are some volatilities some ups and downs but what was the first thing that the usa investors that they did decrease capacity utilization cost they increased the price so this was something different as well and what happens in the EU? There comes the CBAM, uh, Green Transition. You are going to hear them a lot. Maybe in the last year you have heard them a lot, actually. A lot of institutions have made investments on electrical furnaces. In the upcoming two years, especially I know one company, $2.4 billion were invested on electrical arc furnaces and they supported with DRI and DRI is not going to be fed by natural gas, but they are going to fed it with hydrogen. They are trying to figure it out to find ways to make this possible. Yes, electrical arc furnaces will have impact on scrap exports since CBAM will be implemented and it's going to, of course, push the prices higher because all the investments that they are making should be compensated. And the main question for the steel industry is this, yes, they have started globalization and regionalization, then what's going to happen next? Will it become more localized, whether this regionalization will become localization? We have these concerns. We have discussed them in the past, but what are we talking about today? Well, today we are talking about a couple of issues. One of them is Russian Ukraine war, unfortunately, Turkey earthquake, and there is this ongoing Palestine Israel war. These are the hot agenda items in our sector. How do we work? How to make an investment? Where to import? Where to export? The demand has changed based on these situations in the world but there are two things that i haven't mentioned what are we talking about that we have not discussed in the last two decades maybe those who were born after 1975 do not know about this inflation and interest rates why because this inflation has never happened to us at all worldwide not specific to turkey well it lasts 15 years was a bit troublesome for inflation. Maybe you don't know this, uh, but I was in the United States between 1978 and 1982. I worked for a petroleum company. Inflation was 15%. If I say this, nobody will believe me, right? So it rose from 2% to 15%. Well, they do their best, but in the last four to five years, we have lived 15% back then. But the real problem is to see the effects of the inflation and interest rates rises. I'm not going to give you so much information with respect to this figures because Vey Salve has already given us information and our friends later on will talk about the future. That's it. I'd like to say thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Typhoon. Is there any question from the audience, from Mr. Typhoon? Is there any question? 
Let me ask you a very brief question, please. Uh, ask something easy. It's going to be about the USA. Well, there are uh, protective measures and there were mutual agreements, etc. It started with Trump, but after the stages, in the upcoming days, in the mid-term and near-term, this protectivism of the United States, is it going to change? This conservatism, is it going to change or else? What uh, should there be to make a change? Well, actually, there has been a change uh, apart from a couple of countries. Free trade agreements were undersigned. Again, there's exportation from Mexico, Canada and Brazil and quotas were implemented. However, there are some countries, including Turkey, this 25% still continues. Uh, well, actually, I don't have any hope. Well, to be clear, there is nothing in their agenda in the short term, but in the mid term, is there a probability to see a change? Well, I think it requires meetings intergovernmentally. It should be eliminated because section uh, 322 uh, should be implemented for two to three years but they extended the implementation phase of it so actually there is nothing that we can do right now in the midterm normally it should be switched to a quota or else it should be levied however all the sanctions are renewed and uh, investments are going on and new factories are implemented so they've actually got a great benefit out of this taxation. They have supported themselves and they have increased their profitability rates in the last 45 years and they've really used it for themselves. But still, and Iron people are really okay with this. And you all know this, um, so the, the Ministry of uh, the trade of Trumps to Coca-Cola can and he said that yes I made 25 percent taxation here but this Coca-Cola as you see as a public you are going to drink it one cent uh, more expensive and this is very crucial for our national security everybody applauded everybody applauded him well yeah you are right they they said this so this was one of the examples so true uh, correct marketing is important thank you thank you very much